Okay, so this is 7.4. Out of Taylor, it's another Lagrangian problem. It says, consider a mass moving in a fric frictionless plane that slopes at an angle alpha with the horizontal. Write down the Lagrangian in terms of the coordinate x measured across the slope, horizontally across the slope, and y measured down the slope. Okay, so first off, let's draw a picture. Some mass M we have this angle alpha we'll call this height H and it slides on down maybe to some point say here and we'll call this Y tilde okay and this whole bit here, this is our y-axis. So just to see if we were to draw something out, just to give you some sort of reference. Oops. This would be our z-axis, our y, our x. Just as a little reference here. OK. So, we have that down. Now let's do our position like we always do. Watch it in terms of x and y. And that just means x is equal to x, y is equal to y. And the velocities, we just need to take the time derivative. So x dot is equal to x dot, y dot is equal to y dot. And then with our velocities, we can easily find the kinetic energy. So our kinetic energy T is 1 half mv squared. Our 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared. And then the potential energy U is equal to mg and then y tilde. That is the height of our block at any given point. Now, what is y tilde? Well, this whole length here is our h. So if we do h minus, if we do h minus, um, oops, this chunk here, which I think we can see, call this y. Then we'll know our um, y tilde. So essentially what I'm saying is y tilde is equal to our whole thing minus that chunk there. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so y tilde is just some part. H would be at the very top only. But obviously, the potential energy is going to decrease as it slides down. So we need to represent that. Okay. So that is our potential energy. Mg h minus y sine alpha. So now that we have our kinetic energy and potential energy, we can get our Lagrangian. And that's T minus u, which is 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared minus mg h minus y sine alpha. So that's our Lagrangian. And we want to split this up into x motion and y motion. That's what the problem wanted. The x motion is easy. We'll do that first. So for the x motion, we have dl dx minus d by dt of the parcel L with respect to the derivative equal to 0. You can see we get 0 minus d by dt 
of mx dot equals zero or negative mx double dot equals zero or x double dot is equal to zero, which makes sense because what did we have? Well, x is going across the slope, not down the slope. So we're not expecting any sort of acceleration there because there's no force in that direction. So that actually makes sense. And the second part is the y motion, a little more to it. So we have dl by dy minus d by dt dl dy dot equals zero. And now when we do that, we see that we can get an mg sine alpha, because with the derivative, the y goes away, minus d by dt my dot equals zero, or my double dot equals mg sine alpha. You can divide out by the m's, and y double dot is then just equal to g sine alpha. Which, if we think about it in terms of Newton's second law, if we were to look at this from the point of view of analyzing forces, well, if we drew a free body diagram, you'd have your normal force. This angle is alpha. This is the force due to gravity. And the only place where we have that acceleration would be from this force, which is actually in the y direction. Uh, I know it's normally x. This is actually fg in the y direction by the way that we defined our coordinate system, which is just equal to mg, mg sine alpha. And we're letting down the slope uh, be positive, so to the right that would be positive. So then if we do Newton's second law, the sum of all forces is equal to m, the acceleration in the y direction, and we get the same exact results, which is that the acceleration in the y direction, or y double dot, is equal to g sine alpha. So the same thing we would get from a physics one problem, we get using Lagrangian equations. And eventually we're going to do problems where, uh, I mean at this point it's probably easier to do Newton's laws, but very soon with these problems they're going to be much more difficult to use Newton's laws, and those will be coming up soon.